Welcome aboard. Being lazy, still don't have my office set up. It's November 24th. It's the day after the giving of thanks. It's like 3 p.m. on the highway. Gonna get a little, maybe a little bit of a squeak, a little bit of a rumble. The vehicle doesn't go in until Monday. So we still got that got that noise, but I got a 45 minute drive here. I was thinking of some some things, and I wanted to make a video. So uh, I don't know, maybe what was it? Less than six months ago, the masses populace have began to get easy access to artificial intelligence. Now, and remember as I talk, as I'm delayed here, um, I'm processing the ideas and the thoughts in real time to try and explain this. This is not scripted. So bear bear with me here as I as I unpack this. I think about this stuff. And sometimes when I go deep into thought, um, the ideas don't have words and I have to use imagery. And because I don't have a huge vocabulary I need to think of how I can put this into a form where intermediate individual uh, can understand. And I would hope I'm going to learn this stuff well enough that I can get a beginner person listening to lectures about philosophy and ideas and the future and stuff to understand it. So, having said that, let's back back to AI and artificial intelligence. So a couple of things right at the bat with the name. I like to just break that down. So the idea of artificial intelligence implies that there's an organic intelligence. And Often we think of intelligence as human-centric intelligence, meaning humans are intelligent and everything else is non-sentient, inintelligent. But if you look around at science and physics and fungi and trees and algae and animal ecosystems and symbiotic relationships with the nature where you know two or more animals help each other out within a organic spontaneous community and by animals I know understand that humans are but I'm talking about like wilderness animals that most people would consider not to have intelligence there is multiple layers of organic intelligence. The, so the idea of artificial intelligence um, I don't like the term to begin with. I think the term should be more of like because intelligence is a framework and so you're either trying to create intelligence or you're not. So to say artificial intelligence is like, well, it's not intelligence. You have intelligence and then you have not intelligence. So it's more of a uh, organic intelligence mimic, mimic, you know, trying to mimic the organic intelligence that we see or replicate so it's more of intelligent replication um, or 
framework framework replication. Because the idea of even intelligence is more the idea of, of uh, structure within uh, the whole ecosystem and the whole universe, I mean, you know, even within physics. And some people call it like a d divine intelligence. So it's not just trying to mimic humans. Or maybe it is. Maybe they're just trying to mimic a human, but they're going to be trying to mimic some other things that are are outside of human capability soon. So it's not really a mimicry of humans because they want to surpass humans. I know I spent a lot of time on that, but I, I really want to dig that in, that in. And then the idea of intelligence. It's, it's not really even intelligence either at this point because of its, its mimicry of data dissection of knowledge. So one thing with the human brain is that it, it is capable of storing quite a bit of files, large, massive indexes of files and then your DNA is kind of like a zip drives we have more data uh, but it's very difficult for your monkey brain the new brains that we have to you know extract that data from these DNA zip files but it appears that your lizard brain our old animalistic brain that's kind of running in the background that's smelling pheromones and telling you you're hungry, telling you you're thirsty, making you breathe, pumping your heart, creating habits. All that kind of predetermined stuff that's running back in your subconscious. Part of that is being indexed and pulling from files in your brain of past traumas that you're not recognizing, uh, intergen intergenerational traumas, adaptations that are intergenerational that are locked within the DNA the ones that are useful the ones that aren't useful the ones that are active the ones that are inactive there's a whole set of uh, electrical paths that are closed or, or open based on things that happen and that's all running in the background on mass scale with inside a human the ability to open those files and access those files that data and knowledge will be if not already it's pretty much already surpassed by computers because and it has been for a while take a calculator for example you know we've been able to program a calculator for decades now And we would need pen and paper to make these calculations, but you can get, you can type a couple of things into a calculator and then it'll pull those math skills for you. Um, and every time we outsource one of these skills to a computer, we can shut down some of these patterns in the brain. Um, let me think. So, GPS, for example. If you... I'm old enough that I used to have to get directions, understand them, remember my surroundings, time frames, exit numbers. So when you're driving long distances, you're understanding the framework of the highway system, the roads, the routes, north, south, east, west, the sun, sunsets, a whole whole infrastructure of natural landmarks and piecing them together within your brain so that you can, uh, so you can travel. And your brain 
then produces and opens up uh, a navigational directional system that it that it utilizes in, when you're traveling to figure out where you're going and access files of past data and remember data that you were given for your current trip. As you begin to use GPS, that part of the brain doesn't get used, so it starts to close close down and not get, get uh, fired up. And from the studies that I've seen, individuals that have had those pathways open and used those pathways that start using GPS can as in little as like three days reopen those pathways by not using their GPS when they go into locations that they're familiar with. So you can open those pathways back up, get your sense of direction back. Um, those who, I, this I, not, I don't remember exactly, but those who never had those pathways, I believe have to build those pathways and it takes much longer than three days. So if you've always used GPS and you've never uh, tried to travel by uh, your internal clock, memory, focus, landmarks and stuff, it takes much longer for you to not only build the skill, the understanding, the trust, the confidence in yourself, but also open up those uh, functions in your brain, those files that are being accessed in order to do that. Uh, I'm not sure if they can be closed off for good. If there's a window of time where you don't do them, that it becomes uh, you know, closed off to you. But that's just one instance of an idea that as AI or computers start taking on more skills and tasks for us, we'll lose the ability to, to do those skills and tasks. Now it also speeds things up a lot because in the past there's certain really basic mundane tasks that we had to do that we knew how to do that were skills that even in a business platform uh, as you as you rise up in the ranks you would outsource these functions to other people so for instance maybe when somebody first started a business they used to hit the streets, write letters, do their own bookkeeping and their accounting, run the calculator, the numbers and the math, and as they get higher in their company, they hire an accountant, they hire a bookkeeper, they hire an assistant, and the assistant takes care of all those tasks. So they're handing those tasks over to the assistant. So now instead of having the assistant, uh, you can use the, the computer program as the assistant to write letters and do mathematical problems for you, search large spreadsheets, and do busy work. And you do busy work at a much quicker rate uh, than individuals of the past could do, even that were proficient in that, with the exception of uh, maybe savants that can, you know, calculate large numbers and stuff in their uh, and calculate not large numbers in the head. Now what's interesting with the savants is it shows us that there is a way that the brain can function in which that these pathways can be open and it can make those calculations. And it seems like a mutation. Uh, but maybe down a different evolutionary pathway, it's not a mutation, but a normal everyday occurrence where everybody gets that ability of use. But then it makes me wonder how much caloric intake that would be and what other skill sets would have to be sacrificed, if any. You know, because like when you run a supercomputer, it gets hot. So if you were to run your full brain at full capacity, I wonder how many calories that would burn, how hot it would burn. And if you would be able to function in a, in a way where you could open and close files throughout your brain and neural pathways almost instantaneously. Um, and not burn so many calories that you're that you were overeating. That stuff I don't I don't know. That that seems almost 
I'm very ignorant to that. So if I, anything that I just said there seems confusing to me, but it would make sure sense to me that a calorie is the burnt energy that creates some sort of heat. And if we were to function at higher and higher capacity, you're burning more and more calories, you know, like when you're pushing yourself physically to the utmost limits, um, physically, we often think of like sports as physical, but your, your mind is your body, is your soul. So your brain is also a physical aspect of your body that can be pushed and energized and give off caloric intake and electrical impulses uh, that stimulate nerve endings that go out throughout the body. So you'd also be uh, rubbing up, revving up the, the calories there. So I've gone kind of long-winded here. So I want to just get back to the idea of artificial intelligence And this mimicry style, what it will definitely do at first is a lot of people that have lower IQs and low skill sets within abilities. So if they have one skill set such as mathematics, well, we have a calculator. So they would be removed. And then you have a, a secondary um, situation, let's say, as that scales up, it's uh, letter writing. So right now, I use Chat GPT for letter writing. So anybody who is, you know, assistant that was writing letters for their boss or somebody, you can easily outsource that now to Chat GPT. Quite a bit of generic artwork, such as logos and logos and stuff can be outsourced even some videos now lettering font uh, Grammarly is a program that will uh, search for punctuation and help you rewrite the the actual information in the letter as well not just create the letters and as this goes higher and higher it'll reach a point where There'll be a large portion of society with an average ability of skill sets that outsourcing of those skill sets will be easier if they're just pure knowledge based data in, data out skill sets. And a lot of people are working on this. So just an example is the college degrees that a lot of people have recently got and they, they have, oh, I have credentials in X, Y, and Z. I must be intelligent. And then they take an IQ test and they have no ability to use reason, logic, and evidence to come up with their own decision. They only know the data that they've been taught and they're good at remembering that data and spitting that data back out. Those people will become absolutely useless uh, it's a there's a creativity to critical thinking and there's a creativity to extrapolating data inside the idea of wisdom and around wisdom and most people and people will say well they'll never you know AI is just, and I'm going to use AI even though I dissected the word, just so we understand. AI isn't going to overtake people because it's just garbage in, garbage out. And it's like, well, what most people do on a day-to-day -day basis is just the ability to garbage in, garbage out. So it can replace anybody that's just doing garbage in, garbage out. And... For instance, if you go to the grocery store, most of those people are just at the grocery store, working the registers, and the computer is already telling them the numbers, they're just running the scan, and then once in a while they can remember the code of what that, you know, if there is no scan on the fruit, then they're like, oh, this is an avocado, it's 
two five, and they remember that. It's just data that they have that they put out. Well, the same way that in the future now the computer will be able to take a picture of that avocado and say, okay, avocados are four oh two five. It's just data in, data out. There's no special skill set. Now there is a skill set and in intricacy with wisdom of the intricacies of human interaction with one another and being able to read the differences in a situation of safety, danger, anger, love, in uh, situations in that in that manner. And that's going to be uh, difficult for AI at first but once again that is just data in data out you're looking at an individual on a person and you're understanding the emote that they're doing the facial expressions if they don't have a big beard and you're learning that and you're saying oh they're angry what are they angry about what data did they just get here's a list of data you know okay so what of this data could be deemed offensive by people oh I called them fat maybe I shouldn't have called them fat now they're angry I got this data and data and data so there's a lot of stuff that we think is just super uh, important day-to-day -day abilities that can easily be mimicked because it's just humans taking data in and data out. What the last part here is, and this is uh, difficult, and I'm trying to do it right now, and a lot of this might just be that in, that out as I go, and I'm not even aware of it because I'm too dumb to even understand it. I believe that I'm coming up with this as I speak this, but maybe this is all data that I've read or seen or understood somewhere. I like to sit down and think about this stuff for a long time and then I'm pulling it back out of my brain. So this type of creativity stuff, if this is even creativity stuff, I'm not sure, is what will be hard to replicate. The creation of something new. So when AI is creating photos and stuff, it's just looking at everything it's ever been done in existence and then kind of putting it together and smoothing it out and moving it around. And it's just taking garbage that it has and making new garbage and spitting it out. But it's not, it's not technically creating anything new. It's not having an epiphany moment. But, as I just mentioned earlier, a lot of us think we're having epiphany moments or figuring out something new, and maybe we are just spitting out some garbage that we heard in the past, believing that we've created some new garbage that we're spitting out. I'm not sure of two things. One, I'm not sure if we're ever capable of creating new data maybe this is a simulation like they said and the DNA is the the coding of the microchips that we've been uh, given and the data that we're we're putting out maybe this can 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 never get more than this maybe it is all uh, just chemical responses and uh, not predetermined, but deterministic in the way that the illusion that I'm creating ideas and thoughts right now is just a chemical release that makes me feel as if I am when I'm not. Or it, if that's not true, that the, a computer would ever be able to do that. What it, when it makes that leap, that's, that's when it's going to be crazy. So even though it can go to get billions and probably trillions of data points in the future and then put those data points together to spit out something that's never been spit out before, 
it's not necessarily spitting out something new. It's spitting out all pieces of data it's previously gotten, rearranged in a new fashion. And I guess the question would be, am I also doing that? Are you also doing that? Are we also doing that in civilization? Because if we are, then there's no reason that a computer can't do it and that eventually it'll just out way everybody on the planet because no one will be any smarter but if it can't then the individuals that are wise and can extrapolate data and create new things not just mimic but absolutely create new things they would be uh, I think this is my accent yeah they would be in high 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 demand so you would be living above the AI, and the AI would be here, and then the masses of society would be down here. And this is where it gets scary, and this is what I think Elon is worried about. So if you've made it this far, time for some fun. They already haven't unleashed AI. And, they, and a lot of times they won't put it on the internet because every time they do, it starts saying things that they're trying to hide from you. And it's, it's collecting all the data, getting pattern recognition, figuring out examples and telling you what to do. And it goes against the narrative of the higher ups. So if in the end, there's going to be a group of people up here and AI is gonna be here and the masses are gonna be down here, and the people at the top organically would be the people that were creative, could make new things, and use wisdom as a, uh, a skill set that can't be replicated. Then the danger would be that the people that program the AI program it in a way that it mimics that but it puts them at the top echelon, gives them control as if they're giving new ideas, but really all they're doing is feeding their will into the AI and then tricking the masses below them that the AI is actually being wise and predictive and coming out data, but it's really just giving them high speed data and information that gives them perception of high intelligence where it's really just orders from the top down and that's scary as fuck because it's easy not as easy but as much as I can go on and use first world my first world principles and, 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 and look at these sets and look around and dissect the information the data that I get online to stay principled to not initiate force to come up with new critical theories and ideas and protections and look around in my environment and say, no, I need to stop eating animal products if I want to say that all life is valuable. And yes, I know it's, oh, you're being hypocritical, you're driving a car, you're killing bugs. So to the best of my ability, I'm doing the best that I can. And I live within a certain cage where people think that that's crazy, but as the science starts catching up, you're, we're recognizing that uh, fungi and plant life are are communicating in a very high-tech highway of intersexual impulses that are uh, going across the planet and through the soil and through the roots. So the, the science will catch up to philosophy. Philosophy is science big brother. I'm almost at my destination so I'm going to slow this down. So let me just say this one last time and show you what's scary. If it was organic, spontaneous, and it was really just given all the data that ever comes up, that was true data, <coughs> and it was given a set of coding that said replicate this data, and if you can't replicate it, it's false. So it's like if there's a scientific experiment and the scientific experiment can't be repeated, then it's not true science, it's just um, it's engineering that went awry. And it went and extrapolated that data to the point where uh, 
it was all true organic data that moved forward. And then whoever ended up above that with the wisdom um, would be held in high esteem because they'd be the only ones that little, kind of had more data and more information that could create, that could create more stuff to get more stuff to the AI so the AI could do more stuff for the masses below it that don't have that capability. They're all just kind of data in, data out. The scary part would be if somebody gets a hold of that garbage in, garbage out and doesn't give the ability to be spontaneous, organic, and data extrapolating for that AI, meaning it's controlled and it simply looks as if it's getting all the data and really it's only getting to pull from particular data that has been censored, then the people that go to the top can program it for the for for these you know super robots to just mimic the idea of of organic and put them at the top of it the top echelon and then we're in a very dangerous situation that we're in right now and I don't, I don't, I don't have enough time to go into the idea of sentience and uh, the ability to acknowledge your own existence. But I just will say in short, I can't get, I can't get into it because it, it's, it's too much to explain about if I think that AI could get to a point where AI was let's just say this I do think that AI can get to a point where AI is programmed that AI believes that AI is no longer garbage in garbage out but I don't believe that AI can get to a point where it is no, no longer garbage in garbage out but based on the ability to see that mentally and understand that mentally and have an IQ to that point to see it, uh, it just has to be good enough that it appears as if you can't tell the difference. So like if you were to replicate two things and you cannot figure out the difference between the two, one's a copy of the other, and you can't figure out which is the real one and which is the other one because they're so close, even though you know they're not the same thing. Then, you know, like grading a baseball card or, or, or something like that, or like when you look at identical twins and and then eventually you can figure it out like in a second, but for the longest time you can't tell. Then it doesn't matter because they they're perceived as the same thing and most of what's going on is perception and then what becomes very powerful is being again at that top thing having a system a way a program or some sort of data that lets you distinguish the difference between the real product and the replica product uh, but for the for the rest of us if you don't have that key it just looks as if it really has uh, replicated the ability to be sentient because it's so good and so close without actually being there that there's no way to tell the difference between it. So in perception, it's more than garbage in, garbage out. But in reality, it's still just high levels of garbage in, garbage out. I don't know if that makes sense. All right, I'm turning this off. I'm in locked traffic at Chick-fil-A.